Uh, today is, believe it or not, the official day of press freedom internationally. And it's therefore that this show is called Free Media for a Free Society. Uh, this is uh, an episode in a series of world talks. And the series is all around freedom. Everything that has to do with re freedom is the thing that we focus on. And it's a collaboration between National Committee Commemoration Capitulations 1945, or in short, Wageningen 45, and the university here in Wageningen. I have some guests here at the table. I'll introduce them um, to you in, in a minute. Um, but, but first, I'll talk with Pien van der Hoeven, who is sitting here next to me here. Um, she is a specialist when it comes to media and conflicts. Um, you're uh, renowned for uh, your historic view on things, and you recently published a book about all this. When we go back in history and look at how Netherlands um, was busy being free when it comes to media or censoring, <laughs> um, what can you say about, let's say, the events before the World War II? Um, yes. Bef of course, the World War was an absolute break. Eh? We have to first uh, state that. that. That was black, and before it, it was white, and after it was white, uh, um, uh, with, uh, on terms of, um, in terms of press freedom. Yeah. But, um, but, I'm, 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 but there is a yeah. gray shade, and that's where I know you <laughs> want to head. But there is certainly is a gray shade to uh, the broadcasting organizations. So uh, the f first the radio, uh, when the radio was uh, organized in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. um, it was of course very um, uh, uh, complicated because we had all these different religions. So the ether frequ frequencies had to be divided between the Catholics and Protestants and the socialists, especially the socialists. The government was not at ease with. Mm -hmm. So there was a commission that, um, uh, uh, um, that reviewed all the scripts of the radio performances before they were broadcasted. But that's a form of censorship. That is a form of censorship. In the Netherlands? And the special thing is, it's censorship before broadcasting or printing. And, and, and the system we're used to in democracy is that we, um, we, you can say there's freedom of speech, you can say and, and print and, and, and broadcast everything, and if it's nasty, discriminatory, uh, or uh, it, it's a, it has an impact on sta mm -hmm. state safety, then you'll be judged afterwards. Yeah. Yeah? You'll get, uh, but in that episode, it in was that judged episode, beforehand? It was beforehand, only for the radio. Okay. Uh, uh, not for uh, for the. Uh, for and that lasted until when? It lasted until the. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, we started the new in the um, after the. Uh, yeah, second forty-five. World, yes. Yeah. And um, and it was uh, since you ask, it was um, they didn't uh, object to many scripts, but they did object four more than four hundred times to scripts of the Vara, and for the. The social democrats. Yes. So, yeah, that's, that is quite okay. interesting. Eh? Okay, yeah. for the record. Yes. For the record. <laughs> um, so, um, what can you uh, say uh, about censorship in the Netherlands uh, during World War II? Yes, I would say that censorship is, um, is much a, too weak a word, actually. Because mm -hmm. it's not about censoring, it's mm -hmm. about a whole reorganization of society. So um, uh, it's not that uh, uh, they're not they had that newspapers or radios were, were censored. They were reorganized. They had to unite to a Rijksradio. So in effect, freedom of, of press was ended in that period. Yeah, there was, yes, and there was gleichschaltung. So freedom in society was ended. Yeah. Every, the whole society was reorganized on a national socialist basis, and the press and the radio and mm -hmm. was. And they, uh, all journalists were forced into new uh, but, organizations. But we still had newspapers like the Telegraaf, still existing newspapers. We had newspapers, and, the, and, and at first, uh, uh, um, so the system was that the, the people, the journalists, were forced to, um, uh, to uh, 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 become a member of uh, the... Culture Kamer. Yes, and the of the Algemeen Verbond of Journalisten. Yeah. The and union of yes, journalists. Yes, the, the yeah. one big union. Yeah. And of course, Jews were not allowed. 
that is one way to uh, to get rid of the Jew Jewish journalists because you had to be member of this verbond mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, practice uh, your your um, profession. profession. Yeah. And for the newspapers, uh, um, the thing was that they were uh, at first um, there there was uh, a had a soft coercion to 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 go ahead with the uh, with the new uh, um, Nazi government. And then you see uh, through the years that it gets uh, uh, lots uh, uh, repression. Is, yeah. uh, is, uh, but it's and there were some newspapers who who who, um, who uh, stopped circulating yes. immediately. And uh, but most of the newspapers tried sort to model between, yeah. their way. And and at some point they say no, we can't uh, uh, we can't go on anymore. Or there was an intern internal coup. With some uh, editor uh, 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 coming out of the closet as yeah. a Nazi and taking over the yeah. the. Um uh, and yeah. of course, at the same time, we had underground newspapers like Vrij Nederland, many, Parool, many, uh, Trouw, many. 1300, uh, etc. 1300. 1300. Lots of little, uh, not so okay. and, and most of them, you know, 44 when the war is yeah. almost over. Not the pa at Paul, of course. Yeah. And w would you say that after World War II? One, one, one thing is very, yeah? uh, I think, interesting. If I th uh, think, come think of it, there were 3,500 journalists. Uh, um, when the, the war started, uh -huh. and only 75 of these went underground for the illegal. Per uh, don't that, yeah. That says something about my yes. profession. Eh? Well, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is there to say about freedom of press in Holland after World War II? Well, afterward, we have this the inverse situation um, where. You're, uh, everybody is free, uh, and journalists as well. People are free to say or broadcast whatever they want, mm -hmm. and journalists as well. Journalist is not a. It's not a. Uh, I don't know. It's not a regulated. No, profession. you can say I'm a therapist. I'm yes. an architect, uh, yeah. and, and I'm a journalist. So, All free. So, so it's for for everybody. For freedom f uh, of speech is for journalists as well, yeah. and for everybody else. And um, um, so uh, uh, I. No, it's a, in, in theory, uh, the freedom is... is, is you is say in theory, because we have a very interesting actual debate going on about yes. Ongehoord Nederland. Uh -huh, uh, yes. One part of yes. the broadcasting system here in Holland. Yeah, but and there are people who say it should be banned, Ongehoord Nederland, and there are people who say no. First, yes or no. Ban them, yes or no. Ban them yes. from no no. Yes or no. But your no. question is is, fair, is 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 not clear because they no not ban them. They can get them free. away from television. Get them away from they're radio. Free. That is what the MPO, the official yes, system I know. That the, the, under yes. which all broadcasting yes. systems yes. come together, has asked I, the government yes. to do. I know. I, I don't think it's. Are you a in wise, favor of that for that? It's not a wise thing. I no? say, but, but even if they are banned from public service media, they still have the freedom to broadcast whatever they do, uh, whatever they want, because we're. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. only the money. Eh? We'll come back it's to that. It's only the money. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that they don't get anymore yes, afterwards. Because yeah. you you can make podcasts, uh, any, everything. But not on official NPO one, NPO no, two, NPO three television and, yes. and radio. Yeah. Okay. As I said, we'll come back to that important yes. actual uh, question at the moment. Uh, Sander Krijkermeij, uh, welcome to you too. Uh, you. You're a professor of digital media and society here at Wageningen University. What's your current research about? So my main research focuses basically on digital media and what role it plays in our society and in our democracy. Mm -hmm. So uh, to what extent can you use it for good, right? To, um, for instance, motivate people to vote or uh, can it also be bad, right? Uh, all the hate online uh, threats. And in Wageningen, I specifically study how uh, social media plays a role in discussions around climate change online, for instance, but the nitrogen crisis, but also uh, sustainability discussions, but also around health, corona, uh, and on polarization of that. Yeah. yeah. And what's an important thing you found out? So what we see, uh, what's 
I, th I want to use an example I found recently from the US where you see, for instance, uh, around the issue of climate change online, you see that more and more politicians are mentioned and fewer scientists. Mm -hmm. So you see that such a debate get very politicized. Yeah. And this is something I want to study here in the Netherlands as well. So what is the role of social media in these bigger debates around climate change, for instance, or yeah. other life uh, science issues? Is there something you found out that made you really enthusiastic about it? Um, well, I studied. I started studying when Obama got elected. So then, was I did my PhD. So everybody was super enthusiastic about the role of social media. Mm -hmm. And then Trump got elected. Uh, we had Brexit. Uh, we had a Corona crisis, and it was so much uh, fierce discussion. Yeah, and hate online. So I'm really interested to see what role social media plays in our current society. Yeah. I think there's a middle ground. I'm a scientist, right? So I'm yeah. looking in a way. Social media is not going to disappear, right? So, but I want to study how can it be good for democracy instead of bad for democracy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would like you to, to say lots of things about that, <laughs> what can be good about it, but yeah. later on. Yeah. Sakir Kalder, um, very good that you're here at this table too. You're a documentary filmmaker and a documentary photographer, not a journalist. No. <laughs> I used to be. I used to write for the Volkskrant, I uh, work for NOS, Brandpunt. But um, I few things from an artistic perspective. And I think I can reach people and uh, let them feel the experience of a war throughout cinema more than report on things. Because if I go to a war-torn place and write a report, a thousand other journalists will do the same. Mm -hmm. I always like to spend a long, long period with people to capture their lives, yeah. to capture the normal things in a war zone. Um, because I think that will have much more effect than a report writing about someone in the trenches of front lines. Then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, Can you give it, me an example of, of a, a thing you made that made people feel that something was happening and that made yeah. that this information really got into them? Um, and at the same time, the journalism about that subject didn't get into people. When did you succeed while journalism yeah. didn't? No, actually, you were talking about Ongehoord Nederland. There is a journalist from Arnold Karskens. He started that journey long, long time ago when he still was a good journalist about uh, Afghanistan in the Battle of Chora. Yeah. He, at that time, he was the first one to break the story of uh, the Dutch war crimes in that area. Uh, what I did actually uh, for the VPRO uh, last year is I went to search for the people who started the court case against the Dutch government. About this. About this subject. So yeah. I portrayed these people and I spent time in Chora with the new rulers, with the victims. And when we brought the story, it's like their experience. That's why I like to make documentary films, yeah. having a one-sided view of these people because... Yeah. We've seen the Dutch military talking a lot about their experience in their area. And when I uh, brought that story and was broadcasted, I, because I look like how I look like right now, many people start to say, you're, a, you're an Al-Qaeda militant, you're the propagandist for the Taliban, you're a, they call me <laughs> every terrorist group. Beard. I am, you know? <laughs> and uh, I was very happy that the Dutch court decided a few months later that indeed the Dutch government is responsible for the civilian deaths in that area. And that is really quite important to say, because Arnold Kastens eh, is a sort of, well, you don't talk about him anymore, he's, uh, he's somebody, somebody you have to ignore, etc. And uh, on Nederland, as a lot of people say, has to disappear from the Dutch screen. But you state that what he wrote and what he reported about Chora was important. Definitely. He was, uh, he was at the time uh, a really important guy going to war zones that many journalists didn't dare to go to. Yeah. Uh, if you think about Chechnya and Bosnia, like, um, and even Afghanistan, many of our journalists were going like, on an embed with a tour with our military. Okay. And nobody was viewing the, the war critically. Like, there were, of course, people, but there was no space for that at that time. And no money for a lot of people. Yeah, but uh, thank God the media landscape changed a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Saskia Lomans, uh, welcome to. You're a political editor at NOS uh, Stories, one of the most popular contemporary information and news media among the young target group, probably the most popular. 
At, on Instagram we are, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on TikTok too, we okay. are growing there. Um, you work in a team, what kind of team, what does it consist of? Um, we are with around 25 people um, aged just above our target audience. Uh, the oldest one is 36 and we think she's really old. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but that, that's <laughs> how our team uh, in the NOS is, uh, is built up. Yeah, and, and when it comes to colors, uh, cultural backgrounds? A lot of diversity actually. Um, more in NOS stories, uh, maybe even, than in other compartments of uh, the NOS. It is changing, yeah. and the NOS is working really hard to make yeah. that change. But at NOS stories, we are very diverse, and not only in the type of uh, color or ethnicity, but also uh, educational uh, backgrounds. We do have some people that didn't even uh, get their high school um, diploma certificate. Yeah. Um, and yet they came to us via one way or another, and they make great journalists. Yeah. And they know what uh, happens in a part of the target. Can you give group. me an example? Um, for example, we have uh, one lad, he's from uh, Amsterdam, Belmer area. Uh, he grew up there, he knows probably everybody there. Um, it's a colored part of Amsterdam. Very. Very big buildings with many, many people in them, and they're not the best earning people in Holland. No, they are not. And they are also a group in uh, the Netherlands that has some sort of a stigma. Hmm. Uh, indeed, the stigma uh, uh, that they are um, quite poor. Other, uh, yeah, by color, indeed, uh, that they might be poor, um, religiously. Maybe and what does different. he do? Your colleague do about well, what? Well, what he brings uh, to to us is that perspective. He comes to us and says, "Have you heard this?" And we're like, uh -huh. "No, we haven't." And then uh, he tells us what is very much talk of the town right there. And because of those stories that we are able to bring mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of him, we uh, get that target audience as well. I see, yeah. And can you also give me an illustration of, of a story you made yourself and that was important to you? Oof. Um, well, I think... Our most recent one is about uh, the Turkish elections. In, uh, they are coming on the uh, 14th of May. And uh, in the Netherlands, it's also possible to vote. If, you're, uh, if you do have the double nationality, you can register to vote here. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to talk to some Turkish youngsters um, what does this mean uh, to you? Yeah, because um, the Turkish elections are really important. It's the question are. if Erdogan stays or goes, in fact. Yes. So that was an important item in NOS stories. Yes, and what's funny is that um, we go to this community with like, whoa, this must be really important to, uh, to you. No, they're just teens and their parents tell them to vote and they're like, I don't know, I'm just... I just turned 18. I, mm. It's actually very much like mm. our youngsters at 18 or 19 <laughs> years old. <laughs> like, okay, politics, yeah. suddenly I'm able to vote. I don't know. I yeah. have to really get straight what's, uh, okay. what's important and what I think of this, actually. So it's not... Uh, it, also opened my eyes in that uh, yeah. sense that they are not like, yes, I'm very much this or that. No, they are just starting to explore. Uh, short opinion poll. Um, uh, we'll also do that uh, here in the audience uh, by mouth of uh, Marlene. Uh, a very quickie, very quick one. Uh, Ongehoord Nederland, in or out? Uh, honestly, I don't have an opinion on that one. Mm. Uh -huh. And Saskia? I don't know if it is indeed my position, because it's complicated. I'm literally from the NOS. I'm, yeah. in some sense, a colleague be between the same system. So I don't know if it's my position. And uh, if it is my position, I say it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Because it might be too late now to remove them. Because 
well, at this point, uh, if you are going to remove them from the system now, uh, the anger and uh, the, the, yeah, the rage... Yeah. Um, will feed the whole idea that made Ongehoord Nederland start. Yes, and those people are not going to change opinions. They are going to go underground. underground. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know... I just want to add something. Yeah. You know, even if you're going to remove them from the television, they're going to spread all the trash they are spreading still on Twitter, Facebook, okay. on blogs. So. And what would the scientists say? I think we're have, this discussion is often about freedom of press yeah. versus censorship. That's the discussion. But I think if you really look at this case, this is a public broadcaster mm -hmm. who sends out a lot of conspiracy theories which are not well discussed in a journalistic way, right? They yep. didn't follow journalistic yeah. codes. That's, that's and there's a lot of racism. Right? Yeah. yeah, so I think in that sense you would say, yes, they should be banned because they didn't follow those journalistic codes that the MPO said. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I think with with, uh, with uh, Ongehoord Nederland is that if you give a lot of space to these, uh, such a uh, public broadcaster, it also fuels, again, polarization, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, there's and that's your topic, eh? Yeah, yeah. So so it's, yeah. it's like fuel for, uh, for, and I think if if there is, what is very most important is that they should follow the rules, and I don't do okay. that, right? Yeah. So. Okay, l l let's okay. Uh, let's wait for Marlene and the audience about uh, this um, in the second round. Uh, Sakir, the big question: What is the importance of media when it comes to freedom? In what sense? Uh, does it matter? if uh, the media are free or not when it comes to the total of freedom in a society? Mm, definitely. In which sense? To cover whatever they want. Mm -hmm. To tell the important stories. If you look at the Middle East, that's a good example. Um, journalists there are getting locked up if they look critical on a, with a critical eye on the regimes who are ruling. If you say anything bad about the ruler there, you might disappear, you might be chopped in pieces as what they did to Khashoggi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at this time when we find media press freedom very important, yeah, we should definitely say whatever we want, but there is also, a media is a big power, you know? Yeah. And you should use it wisely as well. It's not just to, sp media isn't like spreading all kind of opinions. But if we think this is so important, eh, Sakia, we, we um, Dutch citizens, yeah. Dutch media, Dutch politicians, were angry about the killing of Khashoggi uh, in Istanbul by the Saudis, yeah. most probably by the Saudis. At this very moment, we intensify the trade relations with them. <laughs> if we say that freedom of press is so important, and he was a journalist, what is the effect? Money is more important than his life. As you've seen what happened to Shirin Abu Akleh, the Al Jazeera journalist was like assassinated live on the spot. Do we care? Like I've been targeted many times, yes. mm -hmm. and and I've been locked up in uh, in Greece. I've been locked up in Turkey. Yeah. I've been banned from Turkey. Uh, I've been almost several times shot dead by the Israelis. My best friend was shot dead in front of me. When was that, Saki? Uh, 2021, Where? while I was filming for the VPRO. You're 90, uh, I got 90 journalists a year. Are yeah, murders. they they just yeah. like um, when I was locked up in Greece, the diplomats told me. We cannot do anything for you. When I was locked up in Turkey, we cannot do anything for you. Dutch. Yeah. Uh, when I was almost killed by the Israelis, nobody just asks about you, you know? Pien, um, do we really find freedom of press so important that we formulate consequences when it's being violated, like when Khashoggi was killed, like when Sakir was threatened, etc.? I would say I'm a scientist, but your because your question is who's we? That's the problem in our society. Yes, it's it's a very it's a very important uh, um, civil right, freedom of speech and the freedom of journalism. So uh, we value value it very much. Uh, but of course, there are other interests as well as um, Sakir just told. I mean, uh, we're, we're as a country, we're not able to uh, be the um, policeman everywhere in the world of, of course that's mm -hmm. not that's not, so uh, but i think that, that that at the root of your question is that no you can't you cannot underestimate the importance of a democracy where we are free to give our opinion 
and that the that there's also rule of law that the um, the, the yeah, so that it, it said if it's violated by the government um, that there's a judge okay, who can... Okay, but that, that was in uh, other yes. countries. Yes, Sana, recently there was the news that the Chinese have police stations in Holland underground yeah. and they follow yeah. what Chinese living in Holland are doing and they catch them if they can. Yeah. Yeah. Why does this continue if we have freedom in press in the Netherlands also for Chinese citizens living and working here? Because we're not living in an ideal world. <laughs> yeah, I think um, the media, and as I will not, I will stop with being a scientist, but as, as <laughs> um, the media plays a really important role, right? Yeah. It has a, it's, it's a controlling function. It's super important in a democracy. Politicians are, contr are, are yeah. checked, um, but if you see in, in other crises or in, 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 in uh, you see that it's the, the media is also has a propaganda function, right? So mm -hmm. here you see the, 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 uh, the, the other way media can be important. Yeah, and, and I think um, uh, this infiltration, I think this is really important. Also the, the journalist who uh, was attacked, for instance, also by uh, Chinese um, uh, governments, uh, the yeah. article that was yeah. published. I think what is really important that we continue to show this, right? And I think also for this case that we continue and try to explain and also uh, yeah. because that's what this journalist said. If I don't speak yeah. up, okay. then I am censored, right? And this is what, what should happen also in yeah. our democracy. That's super yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, did you ever feel unfree, Saskia, while working for NOS Stories? In, here in Holland, I mean. No, I did not feel unfree. I did feel unsafe, but that's not yeah. a... Um, yeah. Well, sorry, well Peter Erdevries was free, but he didn't really feel safe. Yeah, that came from another uh, corner, another part, uh, maybe than the Criminals, unsafety yeah. I am. Yes, uh, than the unsafety I might uh, feel. But indeed, um, to the safety of journalists in the Netherlands, there are things to... Improve. Uh, just, just, I want just one example. When, when uh, colleagues of you go to, uh, let's say, farmers who are mm -hmm. angry about things, uh, they take away the stickers saying NOS on the cars of the NOS. Is not, that freedom yeah, of press? Not only when they go to a sensible spot, they, the, the uh, stickers were removed one and a half year uh, ago in general. They were never put back. It's they just, were never put it, it's back. It's just not safe. It's just not safe to go onto a highway uh -huh. with a bus with the NOS logo on it. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for this first uh, round of commentaries. Uh, we, we go to Marleen, who is going to ask uh, the audience what they think about Ongehoord Nederland and, of course, the main topic that lies underneath it, freedom of press in Holland. So I hope you're not all scientists as well, but let's give it a try. <laughs> um, so I want to see hands up if you feel that Ongoor Nederland needs to be banned of the television. Okay. Okay, good to know. And if you don't agree with this, can you put your hands up? Yes. So I'm going over here. <laughs> yes, I, <coughs> I think, I mean, there are plenty of other media where they can still express their opinions, so in that sense they will never be completely banned. But by removing them from the, the sort of the official public system, we give them, uh, actually we are crediting their name, Ongehoord Nederland, hmm. right? So we make them unheard. Whereas if they stay on the system, their name, Ongehoord Nederland, is invalid. So in that sense, um, you'd better keep them. Let's see if, if somebody else has another uh, argument, because I saw the hand of that lady over there, Marleen. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think if you keep them on the system, you give them le legitimacy, and I don't think we should do that. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because the, 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 the lies and the conspiracy theories and the racism that they spread, I don't think we should give them a platform that gives them the impression that it's legitimate to say those things. Yeah. Marleen, what do you think yourself? <laughs> um, on the one hand, I think, okay, it's not really okay what they're saying on the television, um, but they also need to be free, and they need to be... Well, I think what you said was that they need a platform, and in, when we follow them on the television, we can at least see what they are telling. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we know what they are doing instead of doing things yeah. on the ground. Yeah. I want to yeah. add something. So we're talking about Ongehoord Nederland, but so the discussion is about them spreading all these nonsense. But if we look at the Dutch parliament, we have certain politicians mm -hmm. who are spreading a lot of nonsense too, a lot of hate crime, uh, hate, hate, hate yeah. speech as well. And they are part of the problem too. And let's, let's put forward with another question then. Um, in the eastern part, southeastern part of Belgium, mm -hmm. um, that's a, also a political part of Belgium that's different from the rest of the country, uh, there, uh, there's been taken a decision that, that says that right-wing political parties are not given the right to speak out in live broadcasting programs. They can only speak out when the journalists have the opportunity to edit the feature, the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. uh, and Wallonia, as the region is called, is the only part in Western Europe where right-wingers have not one seat in parliament. And these journalists are convinced that, the, that it has to do with the decision that they have taken among each other, about the way they treat extreme right. What do you think of that, Pin? Well, before you, talk, you said that, uh, that, gives a, a complete, that sheds a completely different light on the matter, because I was going to say um, with, uh, that it, it contradicts with uh, the freedom of speech, yeah. what, what's happened in Wallonia. And I still think that. I think it's... Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not in favor of it. And I... You, you although, never, although the effect yes, of, of, the, of, the, exact, of the freedom of press in Holland is what Sakir says, that right-wingers have also the possibility to put forward lies even in parliament. Yeah, that's true. But also, I mean, in, an, in a different, in a different uh, era, uh, 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 socialists were repressed. Okay. And now we think, why, the, why were 400 scripts of the VARA yeah. um, uh, not accepted? And some, now, so, Sonne, so, one, one moment, I'll, I'll go to Sonne. You, you are uh, all about polarization. Huh? Um, if this is a way to stop polarization, what do you think of it? Um, I, I, I study many the effects of this, right? So what is the effect on people, right? So if you have uh, more right-wing views in the media, for instance, what does that do? And I think what it uh, shows is that it increases the feeling of polarization, right? It's also important to know that it's also a feeling, right? So Yeah, sure. Uh, Emotions. Yeah, and I think it revolves around that. And I think when um, uh, when we report, that's also what happens in ta on the tables, right? In in, in shows, mm -hmm. because we go around the table and everybody has can say something. Even well, when you have no, no knowledge of all, yeah. all at all yeah. about that subject. Yeah. So we talk about, and that's what happens in also a lot in the media, right? That's also why I say it sometimes fuels also this polarization. Mm -hmm. If you do this round the table, what do you think of this? If you're not, if you're not an expert, mm -hmm. uh, you will get an opinion. But right? you are an expert on polarization, and what I want to know is what's your answer to the question if it is a good idea to do it like they do in Belgium? Um, I think it's very much I'm open that everybody can say what they want, right? But I think if uh, the problem is if that if uh, it gets unbalanced, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because one of the journalistic percent principles is that you do uh, an evenly say of one point to the other, right? Yeah. But uh, that's Almost impossible, right? Because there's so we'll, many we'll perspectives. We'll come to that subject yeah, later yeah. on, but, but it's now about the question that the Belgium journalists, they say, that the disadvantage of this system is far smaller than the disadvantage of the Dutch system. They say, we don't have that polarization in the eastern part of Belgium. We don't have extreme right in parliament because we keep people aware of what these uh, things, um, uh, what, they, what, they, what they create in our society. It's a bit of a simplistic analysis, I think. I okay. Because yeah. we, we're... we're, we're and <laughs> okay, so we won't so do that here. <laughs> no. Let's see what the audience uh, <laughs> thinks about that. Marlene, could you uh, ask, uh, could you poll uh, on that? I see someone yeah. here. Uh, I just want to add, I lived for four years in uh, Mons, that uh, Wallonia, yeah. and I can tell you a lot of white, uh, they're not only left uh, people, a lot of extreme white uh, people over there. So you can ban the men, the people, or you can ban the broadcast, but you, can't but you ban still the have the people. You cannot ban, you cannot the, ban the people. Yeah, yeah so I understand uh, what you're saying. So I don't yeah. believe in that system from banning. Yeah, okay. 
that's clear. Anybody else about this topic in the audience? If not, we'll go to the uh, second question. That was about uh, um, the, the question of proportionate reporting. What would you like to say about that, Sonne? I think it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a journalist principle, right? So if you hear one side, you hear, hear, need to hear the other side, right? Yep. But um, the problem is that there's always a choice, right? So here, um, for instance, if you show left-wing policies, you're also right-wing. If you say one side of the uh, uh, climate change debate, also the, the yep. other side. Yep. But the problem is that if you always do that, you always give also a lot of attention to a certain... Uh, group, right? Because you would say it's balanced, but you also implicitly mm -hmm. also put attention on the other side, right? So well, it's that, always it's the extremes, that, that's right? That's happened yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in the climate debate. Uh, yeah. For a long time, it was not so clear as it is nowadays that we do have a climate problem. And in that era, um, the talk shows did one scientist who was uh, convinced that there was a climate problem and one scientist who said it's not true. While at, the, at that time, the consensus was already for 80% that there was a climate problem. So yeah. what, what do you think about that proportionate reporting, yes or no? Yeah, that's, and, I, and if you talk about that, what are the implications, then you get more polarization, especially on this. <laughs> so Saskia, you debate. are in the field. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this and what, how do you treat this? Well, I think it's uh, difficult. There's this very uh, popular and famous uh, saying uh, about journalism that you can ask two people whether it uh, rains or not, and then you look outside the window and actually um, see for yourself as a journalist whether it's true or not. Yeah. And that all in a mix becomes the story. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I do think, indeed, that it is important to... Uh, hear both sides, always. Yeah, okay. uh, but the uh, importance you give uh, them, you may vary with that. So like a whole article on climate change, yeah. and then maybe, yeah, well, you know, there's also, a, uh, we're talking climate change now, um, there is a difference between facts and having different opinions. But let's take last week, Groningen. Yes. Uh, uh, Rutte and Feilbrief visited Groningen uh, to make excuses. Um, and then I, I watched uh, NOS Journal. Mm -hmm. And there were four people who had the opportunity to comment. One said it was lousy what Rutte and Feilbrief did. The other said it was very good. The third said it was lousy. And the fourth said it was very good. So that was 50-50, while over there, 99% of the people were really disappointed. Is that a good way of proportionate reporting? Well, I might say that's not as balanced as it <laughs> should be, because indeed... Then, then how, should and that, that's how should it have been done then? Because it is difficult to... Well, maybe three to one. Okay. Not, not ban that uh, voice that actually says, well... Oh, Okay, the they were here and yeah. not I the, like not what they say. Not ban it totally, but make it... Exactly, yes. Yeah. Sakir? Yeah. No, I do not agree with uh, what you guys, what you were saying, like that we always should have the two sides. Because in certain stories we need the two sides, in many we don't. If it comes to victims, and it's clear that he or she is a victim, I don't want to hear the story of like the one who committed the crime. I don't want to go to Bashar al-Assad and to ask him, did you drop the gas bomb on the people in Al-Ghuta? <laughs> uh, go to, uh, to the yeah. Americans, did you kill these people in, uh, in Iraq? Did you bomb them in Afghanistan? To go to Putin to ask him, did you did that in Bucha? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I, th I think we should also respect the people who are sharing in the most... Um, Sometimes I need to search Vul for the vulnerable situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to let them share their story with us yeah. because that's an experience of someone, uh, and we don't need to go to ask the one who did the bad thing. Yeah. So I don't mm. know. I don't need the balance always in these kind of stories. Sana? And I 
I think what we he do here is that making a conflict, right? There are yes. two sides, but they're yes. not two sides. No. There are many sides, That's right? That's exactly mm -hmm. what I, it's mm -hmm. so simplistic. Mm -hmm. It's both mm -hmm. sideism. Yeah. There are many sides. There, 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 you, yes. yeah, you see that politics does that agree. as well, right? Yeah. The so, truth, yes. if it exists, yes. is a complicated matter. Yes. It's, it's complicated. Multi-layered, yes. yeah. multicolored. And I had like this really interesting conversation with a journalist. He said, yeah. like, uh, we had a conversation. Why, why didn't you invite more scientists, for instance, in the news? And he said, but then you are too nuanced, and yeah. we can't have nuance. <laughs> in the media because yeah. that's complicated nobody understands yeah. it and I think that's uh, okay yeah. that's yeah but what I think and he said and I, he made this famous quote he said to me like and I was like oh yeah uh, a nuance is a beautiful city in France but it doesn't belong in the media and then it's like <laughs> and I was so surprised by that because I think nuance is so important especially mm. around these difficult discussions around uh, cl yeah mm. uh, the nitrogen crisis right that we need this nuance and if we don't talk we always think there there we are yeah. these extremes we're not these extremes. at we're the same so time many different uh, uh, we do we do have a problem because when we look at the figures uh, people watching certain program programs um, and not watching other programs uh, that the programs that being that are being watched being viewed are the programs without new ends most of them are extremely popular and not the new ends program. So how, how do we how we, do we treat that, Saskia? That, that when when we know that the new end story is not really being appreciated by the audience, what do still we do? go for it. Still Sta go. Sta stand for what you think is important, and that is I totally agree with you. Is that new end story? And I am in the lucky position that I am uh, part of the MPO. Uh, so we do not have to worry all too much about uh, viewer ratings, mm. um, advertisement money, mm. um, and how many people will actually watch it. But because of that, maybe it's even more important for us yeah. to be that nuanced, to bring that, that into the debate. What, what are the discussions on, on your floor, your professional floor, about when it comes to freedom and, and your working circumstances? Ooh, um, well, what is I, the hot item? Um, that differs daily because we do have a uh, um, gathering every day, every afternoon uh, about what's at that moment the news situation mm. of the day. Yeah. And we do discuss it, we do reflect on ourselves, on our role. We do that on a daily basis. But we do not really talk that much about ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think it's a very much a big worry is that we in the Netherlands have a lot of freelance journalists who get underpaid. And, mm -hmm. and I think this is really important if you talk about press freedom, that you also, yeah. what is really important is that we have good journalists. Journalists have time to figure things out. I can tell you, after this, 45 years of reporting, I cannot exist no. of being a journalist. Uh, uh, I work for a quality newspaper, the Volkskrant. Uh, I, I, I do a radio show on Radio 1 um, with uh, 100,000 uh, listeners. Um, I make TV documentaries. And why, when I do only that, and I do not the moderation of a symposium, for instance, or a debate like this, it's impossible to pay to, to, yeah. to make a living. Yeah. Yeah, That's the situation yeah, we're talking about. And I think if in, about. in the Netherlands, if we are in, in a democracy and we value journalism, I think we also should pay attention to the fact that a lot of journalists don't have enough time, money to do good research. No. And I think this is really important because this is how you sustain a democracy. Shakir, you're smiling. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I made a documentary. Um, yeah, it's a funny story since you're talking now about this subject, having time and stuff. Uh, it was really like uh, one of the, yeah, it was a top film. I got top recensions and stuff. And I got eight shooting days for that film and I spent 85. <laughs> because I thought, how the hell am I going to yeah. make this documentary yeah, and eight. go <laughs> into the heart of these people in eight yeah. days? Yeah. And this is how we feel things in, into the Dutch field. Okay, now I'm going to make a film, a very personal film. I'm going to shoot for years. Yeah. in the homeland with my family and then you know the budget of this film is top budget and stuff but they still say okay you have 60 shooting days mm. Mm. okay 60 sounds a lot but when you have to break barriers go into into someone's heart someone's soul yeah yeah the, you need at least 20 days for that thing yeah so in fact you have to pay to be able to do journalism but since i'm doing honestly like 
I, I shoot everything myself, so I can afford that, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I do certain uh, projects because it's a development for myself as a documentary filmmaker. Uh, it's always always a process. Um, in general, what should we try? Uh, there is a question in the, in the audience. We'll, uh, we'll come back to Marlene in a minute. But uh, lo last round with big questions. What, what would you like to change if you had the opportunity? Let's say I give you money, I give you power, uh, and you are able to change something when it comes to press and freedom in Holland. What would you change if you were really free to make a change? Who starts? I can start? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what for me, I study social media, right? So we talk a lot about traditional media. But I think what we see on social media is there's, it's like a wild, wild west, right? So we have some rules in traditional media. There is a discussion about ongehoord Nederlands. However, on social media, there is no rules. There are no, there's no leg legislation, basically. And I think if I had all the money in the world, I would love to talk to yeah. Elon Musk and to, to uh, Mark Zuckerberg and talk about how Meta and uh, Twitter are fueling this debate, right? And this polarization and this feeling of anger towards each other. What, I think what has happened? That, that that the things have grown in this way, Sana? I think because there are no rules, right? Because these, these, these platforms, they were about social friends, right? But, but yeah. they become jour journalism platforms, right? People mm -hmm. inform themselves on, on social media. If you ask a youngster, they... TikTok. They, yeah. They, they consume so much yeah. uh, social media. It's so important in our daily life. We check our phones, like, all the time. And I think this is something we... if. I could have all the money in the world. And do I you would, also have any idea? I think we should talk about in, moderation about this, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you have also have any idea how to stop it? If you, yeah. I, uh, what I think we should have rules, right? If something is illegal, right? If, if there's hate, right? For, for instance, if somebody is... There should spreading be... Spreading lies. Yeah, and now everything can be there, un unmoderated. I think we have to have moderation. And yeah. you can do... Legislate. Something is coming in the EU, but not everywhere, Yeah, European right? Parliament's going to yes. discuss yeah. that. Yeah. But there it has does. been regulation from uh, in the EU, right? Yeah, it's now important coming. But if it's still yeah. not there. We still discuss exactly. And I think yeah. what is really important is that we will have that... But there's also moderation from the platform itself. It should be... Yeah. Yeah, all of us, right? Like, yeah. uh, like let's say Facebook, or Google, um, uh, etc. They they shouldn't be free to let it go. They should yes, be responsible should themselves. It. Yeah, 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 I think so. And if they don't keep it clean, they should be fined. Yes, and that's also what the legislation will be. So I think this is important. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. It actually depends because uh, Meta and Instagram uh, they can remove a lot of content only when they want. Like my profile is a verified Instagram profile with a lot of followers. And I'm shadow banned for two years now. A shadow ban means that you're, even if you're normally with a verified profile, you should just write my first and second letter of my name and my profile should pop up. Mm -hmm. And you need to write my full name. Oh. And like... Um, and why do they do that, Saki, with you? It depends. It's always when it's about Palestine, you get oh. really shadow banned. Yeah. <sighs> okay. And that's the thing. Always when there is a Gaza war, when there is a war... Yeah many Palestinian profiles disappear from okay. Instagram. And how would you answer the question, here, uh, the money, yeah. here, the freedom to change? Uh, I would buy Instagram and remove my shadow ban <laughs> first. No, no, honestly, it's, um, if, if, if I had the opportunity and the money, I would uh, bring Vice to the Dutch public broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Because Vice News is making stories uh, like Vice News style stories on the public broadcaster, I would just pay for my own program on the VPRO to do mm -hmm. this style of rep reporting with several people. Like go to Russia, go to Ukraine, go to all kind of places. Always go to the two sides yeah. of the of the war zone mm -hmm. because that's bringing a lot of perspective. So nobody can accuse you of one sided news. Yeah. Okay. Pin. Change something, I please. I would abolish the public uh, broadcasting in, in Holland and start a new one where uh, entertainment would not be made. So okay. if, uh, like uh, sports, commercial. Uh, yes, yes, do it in a commercial way. Mm -hmm. Get the commercial stuff you out, know, of it. out of it. And then you, you have m more money for good documentaries. Yeah. More days for Sakir. And... Um, uh, and I, I think it's all, yeah, well, that would... Very tempting yes. idea, <laughs> Pin, <been> very <laughs> tempting. So if you want to change the public broadcast in a good way, start with firing the guys sitting on the chair for 40 years. 
and deciding yes. whatever we're going to make or not. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the problem well, in Hilversum. Uh, well, I'm, I have yeah. something to add about that. You know, fr from, from Hilversum, there's this uh, pretense that everything will be made transparent. Politics, yeah. uh, uh, science, sports, uh, the people who run companies, etc. But the one and only thing in Dutch democracy which is not transparent at all is that same Hilversum. Yeah. Nobody knows who is responsible for people who go there, who leave there, who take the decisions about programs and all kinds of things. That's a strange thing. Saskia, what would you change? Well, what worries me most at this very moment is the way that uh, social media are fueling uh, these conspiracy theories and with the upcoming of AI it's going to get a lot worse. Yeah. Um, I would actually, I do not have a solution for that, but I would like to invest in trying to investigate where do these theories uh, come from, mm. who benefit uh, from them, and then organize a lot of meetings with the people that at this moment on Twitter, for example, are very much spreading this, believing this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but just bring them together, bring them together with us as well as journalists, yeah. and just just talk. No um, yeah. uh, boundaries. Uh, An open discussion. Head. Yes. Yeah. Who are they? What do they want? Where did they come yes. from? Yeah. Because honestly, at some discussions I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we go back to Marlene, uh, who uh, sent me uh, a mail uh, only one and a half day ago because she saw something really important at NOS. What was it about and what do you want to discuss about it with the audience? Yes. So today the uh, Press Freedom Index was published, um, which actually describes which countries are highest and lowest on the list of freedom of press. Um, so I'm wondering, who do you think that is on the lowest place? Which country? Was it worldwide? Yeah. yeah. China? <laughs> okay, one more try. It's not correct yet. Maybe your neighbor knows. Well, some African country, Sudan. Uh, it's near China, so maybe <laughs> let's try. You know? No, I don't. <laughs> I see here an end. It was North Korea. I, I was reading it in the newspaper today. Very good. And then, who do you think is highest on the list? Let's go to you. <laughs> not the Netherlands. No, I don't know. Well, it is not the Netherlands. Uh, it's, I have to double check. I believe it was Norway. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. It was Norway. Um, and actually, the Netherlands was on the sixth of the place, which is quite high. Uh, we rose 22 places compared to last year. So I'm actually wondering, um, what do you think of this rise? Do you think it's correct or not? I see you. Or do you, want? No. <laughs> you had me already, but I, if it's correct that we, ro we rose on this... Uh, mm. Do you think that we... Um, One year? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. It, it has to do with the fact that the last time it, it was estimated uh, was the year in which Peter Edevries was killed, for instance. And, and this year, no Dutch journalist has been killed. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> yeah. there, uh, Sakir. One question about this list. Is it like, uh, also, do they count in the violence being used against the journalist by civilians? Yeah. yeah. Then Netherlands is definitely not on six, should be very low. Mm -hmm. But other countries have this problem as well. Sweden, which is always very high on the list, uh, they're 70% of the un, uh, union journalists uh, um, have reported that they're harassed. Yeah. Um, so it's in... in uh, I think in many do countries. not report the harassment yes. because yeah. many harassment is also being placed online. And yeah. It's, and it's unbalanced. Yeah. It's yeah, well, I mean, when you, when you would have to report that all the time, I could go to the police, let's say, every two weeks yeah. because there is always somebody who says, you have to die, you little rat. Uh, with left uh, wing uh, ideas, uh, I don't know. I know how, where to find your family, etc. But as Saskia said, you know the NOS. It's uh, it's really shady. You know how they treat the journalist of the public broadcaster. Yes. They they call it state media. That's a very dangerous defaultment. Yeah. So six. Mm. Okay. Another remark. Yeah. What would you like to say? 
Well, I want to ask you first. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, during the Afghan Afghanistan war, the Dutch journalists were all, almost, except Arnold Skarkels, embedded, I think, in the in the Dutch army. So giving the information from the perspective from the side of the Dutch army. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what's your question about this? Yes, I'm coming to that. My question is how the independent media should now handle and report about the situation, the conflict situation, the military intervention in Ukraine. Yeah. What's a good way to report about that? Sakir, can Because I come to you with a question? Yeah, regarding, regarding Ukraine, Ukraine is much more accessible than Afghanistan. And Afghanistan, our own source of information, was mostly the embeds with our militaries. And we all believed in uh, what the government was using in their communication, that we went there to start a war on terror, to end the terror. But Ukraine is, you know, we live in a different time. We cannot compare that because now we have cell phones We have access to social media. We didn't have access to social media in the time, begin times of Afghanistan. So it's a, it's a big difference. Okay, but what do we know, coming back to your question, about the Russian side of the story? Have we ever seen reports from the, the Russian there side of actually, the front? Uh, the, there is actually one coming up from Vice News. They went to Russia recently to speak with all those big Russians. And there is a photographer, Jan Morfan. He went to Mariupol with the Russians as well. Yeah. But it's not a popular side. No. It's the same like Syria is the big example of of the war. And I can give you an example of mine. Some of my colleagues were going to Assad yeah. in his areas. And when I wanted to go to the other side, it was refused. By? The Volkskrant. And then I left. And what was their argument to refuse? It's too dangerous. Yeah, it might be dangerous for a white journalist, but not for me. Yeah. And that's something that's... It has to do with insurance. It's a big problem. Does that satisfy your... Uh, ID? No, well, I think it's a real serious problem because we are not fighting in Ukraine, but we are a part of this military conflict. Yeah. And I think how, how to get out it is, uh, is also, uh, well, there are we need possibility, to know, possibilities. We need to know, the, we need to know more. Yeah, you need to know what both sides Both sides. And both, well, there are many sides, of course, in Russia and yeah. Ukraine. But honestly... Like, so there should be more information about... We're going to round up. Sakir, what did you want well, to say? Well, when it's one thing about Russia, uh, like, there are different opinions about Russia, but it's clear what the Russians are doing with the Ukrainians. I don't know if I want to know the other side. I don't know if I want to go to a rapist to ask <laughs> what he did to the victim. I don't, I don't say you, that you all cannot say I don't say, I don't say that. Mr. is saying, what did you say? You cannot say that all no. Russians are rapists. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I just say in, in case of a crime committed, I don't want to go to the Russians yeah. like, to ask the big Medvedev. I don't want to speak with Medvedev. And But there, uh, are many, there are many other opinions in Russia. News here is doing actually many good stories, like from Iris de Graaf, she's going... A lot on the streets and interviewing yes. the Russians. And And, yeah. and you can clearly yes. see that they are not free to talk. And no. some yeah. people even get li on the live reports dragged away. Okay, it, 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 this, uh, this yeah. seems, seems to be a like, ping pong yeah. situation. I want to add now, one, so. one, one thing no, more. Like, like when, when I was giving you the example of a uh, victim and the one committing something, I'm just talking about the military. I'm not talking about okay. the civilians. Thank you very much. Pin, um, I'm going to ask you. Um, Um, in good Dutch, the morale van het verhaal, the moral of this story. We've been talking for an hour. What do you think was the, was the main topic, the main idea? What do we take home? Um, the main idea is that we've been talking here, I think, with people who r really want to um, uh, do good. We're here with do good journalists. Hmm. But, uh, and all the time you keep uh, saying, hey, the journalists uh, do balanced reporting, and we do. But many, 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 and probably the, the biggest part of journalists are, are, don't bother. I mean, they, hmm. they make stories and they want to sell news. And they so, sell, so and they sell. Is it, is it, is it, is it one, one moment, one, is, 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 is it so tragic? No, commercial hmm. journalism in America, they sell wars, I mean. Yeah. Well, yes. I'm very pleased not to be, yes. for example, part of uh, 
the British or American media landscape, because indeed yeah. there you have those tabloids. Uh, I think in the Netherlands it's uh, more nuanced than it is there. Yeah. But indeed, when you are a commercial, you're a company, yeah. you have to uh, get those black yes. uh, numbers instead of the red ones at the yes. end of the month. And your so boss is not going to ask you, hey, were you balanced there? He's going to ask you, did you get your, your view ratings uh, yeah. up? So that's what I was thinking. Okay, uh, we'll but have to stop yeah. here. <laughs> uh, we'll really have to stop here. Uh, okay. We're talking for more than an hour now. And um, I want to thank you at home for watching uh, World Talks. Uh, there'll be another one in a few uh, weeks. Um, and when it comes to freedom of press, there is still a lot of progress to be made. Thank you very much.